you a home grower looking for a little bit of help? Are you ready to learn as much as you can about your favorite hobby? The Homegrown Helpers brings you informative interviews from experienced growers that have taken the next steps in their journey and decided to help you grow top quality cannabis all in your home. Now welcome in our host, Rob Smith, along with this week's Homegrown Helper. Hey buds, this is Rob with the Homegrown Helpers, and we are here bringing you a little bit of knowledge from the consultants around the cannabis industry that are taking that leap and getting ready to provide you with that hands-on education that um, sometimes we all need. When you're starting out growing, sometimes it can be a little intimidating, sometimes there's a lot of information out on the internet or at your local grow store or if you buy a book, we always encourage people buying books, but um, there's a lot of information and sometimes um, trial and error is a little daunting. And these consultants that we have on this show are great at troubleshooting um, problems from other people's grows because that's what they do and helping you kind of take a little bit of time out of that trial and error and reduce the downtime or lost time from making mistakes in your grow room. And uh, today we have on the line Joseph Stanton, and um, Joseph is a longtime grower and um, is going to share some tidbits and a little bit of his past knowledge and, and what he's all about and, and how he feels and, and what he thinks about growing cannabis. And if you like what uh, Joseph or any of our other, our other growers are about here at the Homegrown Helper Show, um, please reach out to us at thehomegrownhelpers at gmail.com. And we can hook you up with your very own homegrown helper, whether that is for in-home consultation or maybe a phone call or a video chat. If you like what you hear, Joseph's going to give you his information in a little bit, but um, we can hook you up directly with Joseph by reaching out to us at thehomegrownhelpers at gmail.com, and he'll also give his information here in a little bit. But if you like what you hear on the Homegrown Helper show, uh, we certainly appreciate a five-star rating and review. Subscribe on whatever podcasting platform you are listening to or uh, just share directly with a friend or on any of your social media platforms. The way that uh, we grow as a podcast is by you sharing and letting people know that we exist out there in the world. So if you liked um, what you heard today, make sure that you give us a little love and share it. That's all we ask. And now that we've gotten all that stuff wrapped up, let's welcome to the show today's homegrown helper, Joseph. Hey, Rob. How you doing? <clears throat> I appreciate you bringing me on, man. So, Joseph, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Why don't we kick things off with uh, just telling us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, how long you've been growing cannabis and uh, what made you take the leap in, in helping people um, get started growing their own? I'm from Florida. I have been doing this for about 13, 14 years. And uh, it started off as just a hobby. You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to build a car with my dad because I had a little bit of extra money from working. And uh, he told me, not to waste my money. He said, if I'm going to have a hobby, I need to have a hobby that makes me money. So I started growing cannabis. And at that time, it was worth, it was a much better paying hobby. But now it's still, it's still more for medical reasons, I think, than, than just the hobby. You know, I've grown past, you know, doing it for fun. And I've, I've realized the help that I can provide people with specific medical conditions from from depression to anxiety to sleep deprivation, you know, brain injuries, seizures, I mean, all that stuff, back pain. That's what's really kept me in it. You know, that's what's kept me doing what I do. I like to be able to provide high quality medical grade cannabis to people that need it. So you have obviously, um, you know, in, in your time growing, have made the transition from watching people use it for mainly recreational use to now most people are recognizing the medical benefits. 
what has that transition been like for you? And what have you seen in, in the last, you know, probably like five or six years in, in that transition? Well, um, being where I'm from, we're like the pharmaceutical capital of the world. So I mean, there's, there's a huge issue with, with pills in this state from uh, SSIs to pain pills to anxiety medication. And growing up, I saw a lot of people go through that. And as you get older, you, you realize that, you know, there's, there's other things that, that can actually help people and that you don't have to get, you know, addicted to these medications and ruin your life to get the relief that you need in whatever, whatever way that is. And, um, I don't know. I just, I feel like it's been since the cannabis has been medicinalized in the state of Florida, there's been a lot of changes as far as the medical industry. It started off real difficult around here and uh, it's gotten a lot better. I mean, we just now recently got flower accessible where you can actually buy buds for the first time, like this month or last month, I think. Yeah, that's pretty exciting down there in Florida. Yeah, before, get this, before what they were doing is they would show you the nub and then they would, so you'd say, yeah, I want it. And then they'd say, okay, we'll be right back. And they'd take it to the back and they'd grind it up and they'd put it in a little cup with a foil lid on it, bring it back out to you. And it kind of, kind of makes no sense to me, but we've got funny little around here. Well, I'm glad uh, that the people in Florida are, are still fighting the good fight and, and have won over. I mean, I, I, I think it's definitely been a huge improvement in the overall health of the, the culture. Totally. You know, because there's, there's been a huge, huge underground market in central Florida and southern Florida for uh, growing cannabis for, for decades. Um, so, Joseph, why don't you tell me about your current grow setup? What's the size, shape, number of plants, type of lights? What do you got going on? Uh, well, right now I've got, I've got about a thousand. I've got a few different spots. My, my bigger spot is a thousand square foot warehouse. I've got three different rooms. I've got um, a mother and a cloning room. I've got a bedroom. And then I've got the actual flowering room. Uh, I use blue CMH 315s in all my bed spots. And then in my, uh, you know, I, I try to keep it light in the, in the bedroom as far as the, the lighting goes. I don't like to overload my bed. Uh, my mother's only got maybe two 315s over top of them, and it's a 12 by 12 room. The actual bedroom itself has got four three fifteens. So I'm not I'm not pumping a ton of wattage in there, but it's it's quality spectrum, which means a lot more than wattage. That's that's really where those three fifteens come into play. And then the the flower room, I run on a sixteen. I like six hundreds because the energy consumption that you use versus the the output and the and the yield that you get from them, the the lumens. All that it's it's kind of the best rating as far as across the bulbs from the thousands to the six hundreds, four hundreds, all that stuff. So I use open hoods, uh, adjust the wings because the bulbs themselves. I mean, temperature plays a big part in the spectrum and the lumens rating that you get. So when you're when you're running some of these bulbs in vented hoods. You don't realize it, but you're actually cooling the temperature of the bulb, which changes the spectrum of the light. So you're not really getting 100% of what you could out of the bulb when you put it in one of those uh, closed hoods. So I use the big open wings, the adjusting wings for maximum re reflection of the light. And, uh, and then I also mix, uh, I've got eight 315s red spectrum in grow or my flower room as well. So we've got a total of uh, 24 lights in there and <clears throat> we run anywhere between 180 and 250 clones in there at a time. Um, we run them on trays, do it a few different ways. And I like to see what's going to yield the best versus what's going to create better quality because you definitely the media that you use makes a big difference in, in the final product for sure. I also actually have another room in the, in the warehouse that is my um, my concentrates room. I have um, two closed loop systems, a one pound and a five pound. 
Uh, and then I have a, a, a rosin press as well. Nice. So I like to dabble with a little bit of the concentrates. I'm still working on growing my education on that side of, of the industry. Um, but it's definitely where everything's going. But the, I mean, the biggest thing with the concentrates is it doesn't, doesn't matter how good you are at making concentrates. It doesn't matter how much money your equipment costs or what you're using. What matters is the flour that you're using to create the concentrates. It all boils down to the flour. If you can't have good quality flour, you can't have good quality concentrates. Yep. Quality in equals quality out, right? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, after once you've got the good flour, it's just process. You know, anybody can follow a step-by-step process, an instruction manual to create, you know, to create the, the, the concentrates through, through a closed loop or a press or something like that. Whereas the flower is so individual to the plant's need. I mean, even, even in one of the most important things that I try to control in my rooms is the environment. A lot of people pay attention to their nutrients. A lot of people pay attention to the lighting, which is all important. But I find that the two most important things in a room are the genetics and the environment. If you got a sealed environment and solid genetics and you can implement a good IPM, which is a, a pest management system, then you don't need to use pest control. I mean, I don't, I don't use any type of pesticides or sprays or anything. When you've got healthy plants, the, the pests don't come into them. If you can keep your room sealed, that makes a big difference. Great, great. So um, I, we're kind of leaked into our next question here, but I, I wanted to touch upon a couple of things that you um, you mentioned. You mentioned that you have a, a wide uh, spectrum of lighting in your flower room. Yeah. Um, was that correct? Well, I've got I've got two two different bulbs that I use in the same room. Okay. I've got um, six hundred HPSs, which yep. is just your standard, you know, everyday bulb. I use the the Horta Lux Super HPS because yep. it's just, it's a proven yielder. I mean, it gives you the weight that you're looking for. And what's the other one? And um, and then I, I, I use a, a red spectrum. I, I believe I believe it's the 4200 4200K uh, 315 watt ZMH. And again, it's an open an open hood. I don't use any uh, any vented hoods at all. I think a lot of the best flowers being produced, at least indoors. Um, is being produced under these mixed spectra- spectrum environments. Um, at least that's what I'm seeing. People that are trying to duplicate or replicate what the sun is producing um, as close as they can. Um, so I think mixed spectrum and and I think dialing in the reds and even if you can add in some LEDs and and get some um, you know some side LED panels in there and really give it the full spectrum of of lighting. I think you'd see a huge difference, but I, I really like the direction you're going there. And um, and one point on the um, closed versus open hood, you made a point about the uh, the cooling of the light changing the spectrum that you're getting, and and maybe the the overall lumens. And I, I'd never really heard that, but that's that's an interesting thought there. Um, but I would point out that with a, a closed or a, a hooded light system keeping the glass clean um, between your bulb and, and your plants is super critical in um, making sure that you're getting all of the lumens and the spectrum out of that bulb and onto your plant. Because in that closed vented system, any dirt getting in there is going to cover the inside of that lens and really prevent that light from getting through. Yeah, and that's, so, that's a you difficult know, thing to clean when you're, you know, seven weeks into flower. <laughs> totally, totally. And most people are using some sort of support that they actually, you know, like yo-yos where you tie off to the lights, yeah. you know. And, and so if you can't move your plant around the room, you can't clean the the bulb or the lens that is, uh, you know, in between the bulb and the plant. So, you know, after that fourth or fifth week, you're really you know, potentially losing some some serious lumens and some spectrum out of that light if that lens isn't clean. So that's a, a big consideration point when, when choosing um, how to set up your room. Yeah, and you know, a, another thing a lot of people do 
especially when they're first starting out. They they get one or two good crops in, and then they want to they want to get something. They want to get more light. That's normally the first thing that people need to do. They want to try a different light or get more light. You know, and one thing that I don't know if people realize is like, okay, so a, a thousand watt HPS is going to give you like, and these are just, I'm not being exact, but it's a roundabout number. They're going to give you like 150 to 175,000 uh, lumens worth of light. Okay. So if you've got like my room, I've got 16 lights. If each one's got, of the HPS anyway, if each, if each one of those has 160, 150,000 lumens, I mean, you're talking, what's that, like uh, 40, 4 million lumens? You know, I mean, it's obviously not going to be in one specific area, but, you know, it's it's pretty high because my reflection with my hoods, it crosses big time. You know, I mean, I've got I've got them back to back. So it's a good spread on each light. And what what you don't realize is at any given time, the most intense lumen count that the sun ever produces would be 11,000. So lumens isn't really what you're after. What you're after is spectrum. And by getting the right spectrum of light, you'll get more production with higher quality and stronger plants, whereas stronger plants also lead to less pests as well, because pests are like any other predator in the world. They go after the weak. If you got strong plants, you don't have pests in most cases, unless you get some type of, you know, random infestation, which, which can happen to anybody, you know. I mean, that's a totally different topic we can get on a little bit later as far as the pests and how to handle that kind of situation. Sure, sure. Well, now's a perfect time. Um, so the next question I have lined up for you is, what's the most impactful move a grower can make to impact overall plant health? And I think you touched on it a little bit earlier with the environment and the genetics being the most impactful thing that, you know, when it comes to, you know, what you look at in a grow. But uh, maybe there's a different answer. Maybe it's the same. Is is environment uh, the most impactful thing to pay attention to for overall plant health? Well, I mean, you always need to start with good genetics, and there's so there's so many people that are just chucking beans these days. You know, they they they, they throw a little bit of pollen in their flower room, cover it with a plastic bag, and sell them seed. You know, they they don't do much actual breeding. Breeding is super, super important in the strength and quality of your final product. If you've got a breeder that's put the years in, because that's what it takes to create a solid strain, it takes years. If you've got a breeder that's willing to put that in, and you're going to get a more stable, healthier, faster growing plant that's going to be more pest resistant. And, I mean, that right off the bat gets you going in the right direction. So. Genetics is where you always got to start. Spend the money on the known people. You know, there's there's guys out there like, I mean, I don't know. Personally, I think I think Jinx Proof is one of the one of the greatest guys out there. Miss Jills, she's she's awesome too. I mean, they just they know what they're doing. They know how to breed these things, and they put out quality products. You're going to get something strong that yields that's that's going to be medicinal grade. If you're not putting the time into the breeding process, then you're not really getting medicinal grade cannabis. It's not the same. So that's that's number one rule. Start with the right genetics. Um, number two is definitely environment. Most people don't do the research, but plants grow naturally in specific areas around the world. They don't grow everywhere. And you kind of want to see. Well, I mean, that's that's getting a little deep. So like, I mean, you can always do research on the strains and find a like natural environment because pressures make a big difference. Uh, not too many people pay attention to negative or positive air pressure, in the world, and that can actually play a huge role in your final product. Um, but again, that's that's getting deep. Maybe we can talk about that a little later. I mean, just basic, like a sealed room. A clean room, clean cleanliness is extremely important. You don't want to leave, you know, dead leaves and, and organic material laying around because that's just food for bugs and they'll find their way in, you know. So being clean, 
flat white paint is also a big help for a lot of people. A lot of people want to buy the, the reflection material and all that. I don't use any of that in my room. I use flat white paint because it reflects 99% of light spectrum. And the spectrum is what matters. And it's a lot easier to clean than all that reflective stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Plus, I mean, plus if it, if it gets dirty, you touch it up. Yep. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's super easy to put it back up and it's cheap, you know, and it does exactly the same job. But, you know, spend the money on good quality lights. Um, stay away from CO2 until you're experienced. That's that's a big key that a lot of people want to jump. They want to jump in the CO2 because they know that it gets some bigger nugs. And yeah, it absolutely does. You can get 20, 25% increase on your yield just from using CO2. Like just adding CO2 to a system can, can give you massive, massive results. But what people don't understand is as fast as it can make the plant grow, it'll kill it just as quick. So if you have an issue and you don't use CO2, you have more time to get control of that issue. When, like, say, a magnesium deficiency or a calcium deficiency, something like that, um, or even a lack of water, if you're, if you're not watering enough, if you're inconsistent with your watering schedules, and, and sometimes you, you get to you get there and they're drooping on you, and their roots are running, they're, they're looking for the water. That's what they're doing when they droop like that. The energy goes out of the top of the plant and into the roots, and the roots are just stretching, looking for that drink. So Joseph, um, I think, uh, again, you kind of touched on it in the last question, uh, right at the end there, but, uh, in your opinion, what can a grower do? What's the one thing that a grower can do when they're looking to improve or increase the yield that they get out of their plants? Um, I mean, a good spectrum is key N nutrient. A lot of people like to focus on nutrients and I mean, nutrients definitely matter, but that should be almost one of the last things that do that you focus on like you can create pretty good cannabis right? and you can flush everything out of it you know so there's no chemicals or residues left in the plant i mean genetics and environment is huge I mean, you know spending the money on the the right temperature sensors and humidity humidity controllers keeping a room the right temperature and the right humidity is super key to a good yield also, a good veg. A lot of people discredit the veg. If you don't have a good veg, you're not going to have a good yield. And that's, I mean, it's just plain and simple. If you can take that seed and you pop it and you get it going and it's been healthy the whole time and you start taking clones from this, this healthy mother and they stay in a completely healthy situation their whole life, they're not stressed out, they're not you know, water deprived, they're not nutrient deprived. If you can just be consistent for that plant the way Mother Nature is, you're going to get the best quality yield. Great, great. So uh, we're just going to take a quick break to thank our sponsor real quick, um, Sweet Leaf Plant Nutrients. Sweet Leaf is made in Maine, distributed all over the United States and into Canada. I believe they're starting to get into the UK, but don't quote me on that just yet. Um, Sweet Leaf Plant Nutrients is a premium vegan plant nutrient line. Smart nutrients for smart growers. That's what they like to say. I mean, they keep the PPMs real, real low. They take a lot of pride in only giving your plant exactly what it needs. I believe they don't get over a thousand PPMs even in peak flower. Let's read some of these awards that they've received. Best Nutrients of 2018 from the High Time Stash Awards. They won second place or third place best edible out of the Commonwealth Canvas Cup from flower that was grown with sweet leaf plant nutrients. High Time Stash Award for best flavor enhancer and their CalMag Amendment Enhancer, um, their CalMag Maximizer, I, I think it's called, won the 2017 High Times Award um, for best amendment, hands down best amendment. It was their best um, their CalMag Maximizer. I've heard great reviews from people that, that may not even use their full line of nutrients, but use that CalMag Maximizer. You know, if you've been in online forums, people are rave about how CalMag might be the solution to all of the world's growing problems. 
don't quote me on that. It's it's not true. But uh, but you do need CalMag for your plants, and uh, Sweetleaf has one of the best on the market. So as you all know, we are part of the Growcast family of podcasts. So um, use the code Growcast over at Sweetleaf. That's S U I T E L E A F dot com sweetleaf.com and use the code growcast and you get 20% off everything on the website. So, um, Joseph, do you have any unique growing tips or tricks that you'd like to share with our audience? Um, yeah, I've got one that I feel like is is super unique. I test my pH. (laughs) (laughs) It it seems like out of this world. Yeah, I know. Right. I mean, (sighs) The, you, you mentioned how some people say the cow mag could be the, the, the fix to so many growing problems. And, and it is an important amendment for sure, one of, the, one of the most. But balancing your pH correctly is probably the most important thing to your nutrient line. You know, I actually come from a chemistry background where some of my other businesses deal a lot specifically with water chemistry and water filtration. And um, I knew about pH and water for killing organic material for a long time. And when I first started, I mean, back when I was a teenager, I was, I was into this stuff. And when I started growing, I realized I'm doing the same thing, but I'm not. Because when, when, you, when you balance the pH to, to kill organic material, you're balancing it so that it can absorb specific nutrients that overload the plant um, and over fertilize it basically. And it dies. So that's what weed killer is, all that kind of stuff. You're just over fertilizing the plant. That's, that's a, a pretty good lesson too. You know, Roundup is just nitrogen. It's just really strong nitrogen. So, I mean, you can kill your plants with too much nitrogen. You know, you, you want to balance your pH and keep your, parts per million relatively low you know you can always add more you can always add more i i normally go with half the recommended dosage on all my nutrient lines i mean even when they're geared for cannabis because some strains are just lighter than others and i mean a ph pen is just it's it's a huge advantage to growing and knowing how to use it keeping it calibrated i mean that's that's super important that's the best grow tool you can have is a ph pen so joseph um based on your experience and and helping many other growers get set up and and become a better grower or troubleshooting their room what type of person becomes the best type of grower Um, what character traits are the most important for a grower to succeed um man that's a good question man that's a good question because there's a lot of people who grow good cannabis sure. and they all grow different ways. But I think on a homegrown level, the people who grow the best are the people who need it. You know, the people who need that, that medicine, they know they've had the difference between medical grade and street grade. And they have these issues and they want that medical grade. And they seem to, to put the most love into it because the people th- you got to remember that these are not biomechanical machines. Okay. These are living creatures, they're entities. They have vibrations and they feel your vibrations. And plants can take on the personality of the grower. If you have someone that, like uh, my mentor specifically, he needs his to be the most potent medicine he can have because he has seizures. And High potency is huge for him. So when you, when you smoke his cannabis, it's always super, super strong. That is the personality of it, you know? And you, you, want, you want that new grower to, to try to put their personality into the plant, you know? Some people are real happy, real laughy, and you'll get that, that smoke that just makes you happy, mm-hmm. you know? It puts a smile on your face. Some people, it's loud, they get paranoid, they freak out, and then you smoke it and you do the same thing. It just makes you paranoid, you know? I mean, it's not every case, but I think that's a lot of it. 
So I, I feel like the people who grow the best are the ones who care the most, um, the ones who need it for personal use and know the difference. You know, you're going to put your time into it. You're going to look at it every day, multiple times a day. You're going to want to do too much. So it's easier to throttle somebody back than it is to push them forward. Yeah, people who have listened to the show or listened to me on other podcasts are very aware of my personal mantra, and that is this plant will give you everything that you put into it right back to you, or this plant will return everything that you put into it right back to you. So whether you're walking to your room full of love and positive energy, or you know, you're in a bad mood and you're a little bit pissy, you might be arguing with your, your wife or your husband, I've actually uh, stopped myself from going into my grow rooms in a bad mood and, and meditated for a few minutes and cleared my mind because I didn't want to bring that negative energy into the grow space and, and around my plants because I, I knew that the plants would feed off that energy. And even if it was just a day, um, you know, they, they recover, but I didn't want to bring them down to my level. I always wanted to bring them up, you know? I get that. I, I respect that a hundred percent for sure. That's how that's how my mentor is too. He won't even go in there if if he's got a flustered mind. I'm kind of a little weird about it. I kind of I like to go in there with that flustered mind because they they clear me out. You know, it's like I've got this relationship with my plants where they help me focus totally. You know, they and that's that's maybe maybe that's the personality that they take on from me sure. you know because i definitely i work a lot and that's that's like my my happy place sure it's where i i might walk in frustrated and emotionally unstable but when i walk out i'm happy and i'm smiling totally and i feel like that energy exchange between me and them definitely creates that yeah i always tried like definitely there's there's that zen zen place in in the garden and i think every grower experiences that absolutely you know, I, I try to take that edge off, I guess, before going in there and then let the plants, you know, bring me back up to a hundred percent. Absolutely. I mean, and I, I get that. And I, like I said, I respect that entirely. I totally understand that mindset because that, that's what was told to me. That's what I was told to do. And I just, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard for me. Sometimes I just need to get in there to forget about everything else. And that's, you know, it's, totally. I mean, everybody does their own thing. You know, some people are in there a hundred times a day. Some people have got a, a good friend of mine who uh, recently became one of the first people in the nation with a traumatic brain injury to become uh, legally disabled. The courts actually approved his disability rate, uh, which is, he's one of the first in the state. And he's taken a lot of head injuries and he's a really great guy, but he's in my peak physical condition. So it's hard for somebody to see him as right. disabled. Um, but he, he lives for that tent. You know, I set him up with a tent with a couple of three fifteens. We got his AC, right? We got him a dehumidifier. I'm going to put a little four by four tray in there with the reservoir. And uh, he's got, it costs him maybe 30, 40 bucks a month to run this thing. I mean, it's super cheap. It's efficient. And, and he rocks it and he gets like a pound out of it every time, man. And, I mean, he's in there every day, 10 times a day, just peeking his head in, you know, hanging out with them. I mean, that, they're, right. they're like his buddies, man. They're, cool. they're his best friends. And so, I mean, yeah, there's everybody's got their own little their own little quirks about what they like to do with the rooms. And that's great. That's what, that's what provides the personality. You know, and there's there's nothing better than smoking the personality of your own of your own cannabis. I mean, it, it it's just it was grown for you. You know, you're going to you're going to smoke. You're going to like your cannabis better than anybody else's because it's what you need for you. Well, if we're doing our job here at uh, job right here at Homegrown Helpers, then um, definitely that is going to be the case. We want to help you become the best grower that you can be whether that's just listening to the interviews and, and gleaning a little bit of advice from each one of our consultants, our guests here, or if you actually enlist one of their services and get them either on the phone or a video chat, or maybe you want them to come in and, and just take a look at your, your grow setup for 
you know, an afternoon or a couple hours or whatever. You know, we have people that can help you do all those ranges from just some basic questions to full room design and setup. So if you need any help, reach out to Joseph directly and we'll get his information in just one more question. So stay tuned or you can email us directly at thehomegrownhelpers at gmail.com. So, uh, Joseph, last question here in our regular podcast. Again, if you're not familiar with the format, we do have a bonus show available to you. We'll uh, wrap things up here in just a second with Joseph. And uh, then uh, you can head over to thehomegrownhelpers.com slash bonus and uh, download the bonus show, uh, the next five questions that we are about to ask Joseph. Um, But before we get to that part, Are there any last bits of advice you'd like to share with every grower that's listening right now, Joseph? Um, Expect to fail and don't look at it as failure. Look at it as what did I do wrong that I can do better? Because even somebody like my mentor who has all the degrees and the experience and the greenhouse experience and the outdoor experience, and he's been all over the world growing, he still learns every single time. He still learns every single time. And one of the most important things in learning your room is don't change more than one thing at a time. If you change two things in your room and you get a better yield, which one created the better yield? You don't know. So if you want to actually track your progress, build your room, set it up, Get it going. Change one thing at a time. If it works, you know it works. If it doesn't work, you know it doesn't work. And that's that's really some of the best advice you can give a new grower because everybody wants to just get all this stuff and it's so fun and it's an awesome hobby. And there's so many things that you can buy in that. But you got to know what you're doing. You got to know what you did. You know, that's the biggest thing. You got to know what you did. And if you don't know, you can't. You can't move forward with with a clear head. You don't you don't know. So we're uh, big fans of the at the uh, Growcast family here of um, encouraging tracking, and and especially as we've started this podcast, the Homegrown Helpers, uh, we've realized that if people really want to enlist the help of a consultant, uh, we really encourage taking pictures and taking notes for a week or two before reaching out to that consultant, so that they can help troubleshoot in in as quick a manner as possible so that they can look at the pictures, match it up with your notes and kind of say, well, this might be the problem. Let's try this. And and we'll know in a day or two if that corrects things based on how your plants look and the pictures that you send me after this phone call. So you, you can't, you can't improve what you don't, or you can't manage what you don't measure. So take those notes, uh, make sure you're tracking your inputs, tracking what comes out of your plant, measure, your PPMs, your runoffs, all that type of stuff, at least until you feel like you get the hang of it. And then then maybe you can wean off the the tracking, the heavy tracking, but really that should never stop if if you're serious about becoming a better grower. Yeah, absolutely. My my uh my mentor's always getting on me to write in my books more. He keeps up he can tell you what he grew in nineteen eighty nine, what fertilizer he used, how much yield he got everything he's got stacks and stacks of composition notebooks the biggest thing that that does is when you get more experienced and you find a cross that is a cross from something that you grew in the past you can make references to what you grew in the past and make notes and and accommodate what you're about to grow so that's that's a big help when you write everything down for sure great stuff great stuff so Joseph, as we wrap up our regular podcast here, how can our audience learn more from you, um, enlist your services, and connect with you if they'd like to? Uh, well, the easiest way to connect with me is through Instagram. Uh, I have an Instagram page. It is um, it's not a big page. I, I kind of I'm not super user friendly on Instagram. I mean, I got it on my phone and everything. I take good pictures. You can see you can see what I do. But uh, my Instagram is X N O S O M T I. That's X No Sumti. It's a, an interesting name that comes from my past, but that's that's my Instagram page. Uh, I also have 
Southern Fried Productions on Instagram. And my mentor is John Smith 710 420. Any of those three pages are pretty much linked together. If you want to contact any of us on that, we'd be more than happy to help with any questions or, or um, advice that you may need. We're both uh, very well educated, him way more so than I. Um, but I, I definitely know my part as well. Awesome. It certainly sounds like it. Um, we, we definitely speak of the same language and share a lot of the same thoughts on uh, growing and helping other people uh, become better growers. So I really enjoyed our conversation today, Joseph, and uh, thanks for your time. Um, we're going to wrap no this uh, regular podcast up. And if you liked what you heard and want to hear the next five questions, we encourage you to head over to thehomegrownhelpers.com slash bonus or bonus content to gain access to the rest of this interview, as well as the um, rest of the bonus content that we have out there from all of our other interviews. And um, again, if you liked what you hear today, um, don't forget we produce lots of other content. Our main podcast is Growcast Podcast. It's all about uh, cannabis growing with interviews from um, growers and entrepreneurs from the industry all over the world. And um, if you liked what you heard, head over to Homegrown Helpers or thehomegrownhelpers.com slash bonus and uh, download the rest of this episode. Thanks, Joseph, and we'll catch you next time. And no problem. The last content's the best, guys.